off on his way. to tell you that after 11 series we finally have the royal stamp of approval you may remember that a news of the world journalist dressed up as a bogus sheikh persuaded sophie reese jones pr firm to set up gay sex orgies in thailand the bogus sheikh said i thought it would be good to get a few big names to which sophie replied and this i promise you is a direct quote well i know david gower that'd be fun <laughs> You at a gay orgy? What was it? Grab a granddad night. <laughs> well, I know you're desperate for your night, Lord, but it's the Queen you go down on your knees in front of. You don't have to work your way through her sons. <laughs> I thought he was gay for years, though, because every time I saw him in the papers, it always said Gower out. <laughs> With David and Jonathan is a top-class centre-forward who's played for no fewer than four clubs in the last year. <laughs> so, don't be surprised if he's transferred to a question of sport before the end of round three. <laughs> Stan Collymore. <laughs> With Rory and Gary is one of the country's most respected golfers, our former Ryder Cup captain, who made the news recently when he fell out with Nick Faldo. In fact, things got so serious that he hasn't been invited to Nick's last five weddings. <laughs> Mark James. <laughs> we kick off the series with Sporting Bluff, where the teams decide who on the other side is speaking the truth and who is as believable as one of Stan's retirement announcements. <laughs> David, Jonathan and Stan, here's the former British world heavyweight champion, Canada's Lennox Lewis, going down in the fifth to Haseem Rackman in Carnival City, South Africa, last week. Oh. Oh. oh, he's got him! He's got him! He got Kenneth and he's got him! Is it Oliver McCall all over again? It is! Now, apart from Lennox himself, someone else was to blame for his defeat, but who? Gary's team. Lennox Lewis lost his world title because he spent too much time with Eminem. Lennox Lewis lost his world title because he spent too much time with Julia Roberts. Lennox Lewis lost his world title because he spent too much time with the Countess of Wessex, that's Sophie Rhys-Jones, who's married <laughs> to Prince Edward. M&M. &M. What, what's his real name? His real name's Marshall Mavers. That's very good. They do have yeah. rap names. Our rap names, for example, if you... Well, what would your rap name be, do you think? You'd be... Esco. You'd be Esco. Because Jennifer Lopez is J-Lo. J-Lo. Puff Daddy, he's changed his name, hasn't he? P. Diddy. P. Diddy? Mm. Is he just a big fan of Ken Dodd, is he? What's that? <laughs> Esco, you say? Esco. You take the first two <coughs> letters of your first name and your surname and you... I just thought for you, probably, let's go would be better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'd be RMC. Yeah. You'd be Geely. You'd be Maja. You'd be Snoop Wafty Waft. <laughs> what about Julia Roberts? Have you seen with Julia Roberts? She did the longest speech at the Oscars in, in recorded history. It was so boring, I turned over and watched the golf. <laughs> <laughs> no offence. <laughs> Why do you think golf has the reputation for being a boring game? Why um, do you think? It can be boring. <laughs> I'm sorry, I blanked out on you for a second there. <laughs> Not as boring as cricket, surely? I, I've no. seen David playing as it's like that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's more like Don't that. Don't he start? <laughs> <laughs> Julia Roberts, well, you, hang out, you so hang out with a lot of famous girls over the years, Stan, haven't you? When I say hang out, I obviously mean it in the biblical sense. <laughs> One or two. Do you mind if during the show, if a lady's name comes up, if I give you a special wink, could you just give us a thumbs up or down? Okay. Julia Roberts. What? No, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to misunderstand the rules of yeah. this. <laughs> We can all boast about yeah, it. Yeah. Actually, speaking of girls, I should point out, so I know you didn't want me to mention this, Rory, but Rory's here this, this evening, despite the fact that his girlfriend is currently very ill, so we, we should be very thankful, and I'm sure you'll join me in wishing her a speedy recovery, and the rest of the flock as well. <laughs> uh, 
And then Countess of Wessex. Sam. Um, well, she's got a title. At no, least. I mean, yes or no? <laughs> I, said, I bet she scrubs up nice. Yeah. What do you think, Kevin? Should we go Julia Roberts? Julia Roberts sounds good to me. Should we do that? As an answer to yes, go on. Julia Roberts. So you think yeah. that Gary was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. <laughs> yes, indeed. Three points. Yes, Gary told the truth. Lennox Lewis arrived in South Africa only 11 days before the fight because he was acting in the remake of Ocean's Eleven, starring Julia Roberts. Lewis also blamed his defeat on the sudden altitude change from six foot five to canvas level. <laughs> Lennox Lewis's nickname is the Lion, as in the phrase "Who's that lion in the corner?" <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Lewis insists he'll be back in the ring with Rackman in August wearing a bikini and holding a card saying round four. <laughs> Gary, Rory and Mark, it's our very own Stan Collymore for you. And Collymore, spectacular goal on his debut. Now that he's retired from football, Stan told the press he's looking to move into another career, but what did he say, David's team? I said I wanted to be the next James Bond. <laughs> Surely no problem there. Uh, Stan Collymore said he wants to be the next presenter of Match of the Day. Huh. Surely no problem there. <laughs> You're welcome to it next season. <laughs> Stan Collymore said he wants to be the next host of The Weakest Link. Mm. You reckon Stan as James Bond? Mm. What film would that be? You only played twice. <laughs> <laughs> Are better now? Oh, I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> or possibly Dr. But no. Uh, yes. Uh, no. Uh, well, let's go. <laughs> been never say never change clubs. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're a bit, a bit hard on Stan because actually he was, you were at Leicester quite a long time, weren't you? Is it Six months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it yeah. Leicester long enough for the replica shirt makers to get to the second L? <laughs> <laughs> Right, I think David made a better bond, didn't he? 007, his last three test scores. <laughs> <laughs> what else was it? Hold on. Match of the day. Mm. <clears throat> Do you think they'd ever make uh, an ex goal hanging uh, Midlander with a boring accent uh, match of the day? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, never. Yeah. I can see you following in the footsteps of old Vinnie Jones doing a bit of acting now. If you want to follow in uh, Vinnie's footsteps, you can see him from here, they're all over Gary's face. <laughs> How about James Bond? It's got to be James Bond. I think James Bond. Do you think that Stan himself was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. <laughs> so the shock news is that Stan himself knew the answer. He told a tabloid journalist, I want to begin work in the cinema and television. I want to be the first black James Bond. After Stan's sudden departure from Spanish club Real Oviedo, club spokesman Miguel Solis said, it seems like only yesterday we presented him to the fans, whereas it was in fact this morning. <laughs> <laughs> the producers of the Bond films have told Stan that he is on their list, just behind Matthew Kelly at number 10,005. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. Time to line up for our photo opportunity round now. We'd like to know what stories lie behind a pair of publicity pictures. David's team, here are the moments leading up to a photograph. Even I know this one. Hmm? That's, the, uh, that's the man in the photo who's pretending to be a Manchester United player. I don't know much about sport. I'm here to give the ladies something nice to look at. <laughs> we all know it's true. We might as well admit it. Whereas Rory, he knows everything about sport. <laughs> but even with my limited knowledge, oh, I can tell you, that bloke at the end, he's a better defender than Gary Neville. Look at him. <laughs> oh, is it the quarter final of the Champions League? It certainly is. By Munich? Yeah. And it's a guy called Carl Powers. Carl Power, very good, yeah. yeah. Um, but he was there, he was with that team, we mentioned for longer than you were with that Spanish team, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> a 
similar thing happened to me though. I was looking through the Radio Times recently. And there was a photo of us on the show, and next to me there was this strange, weird old lady sitting, all wrinkled, <laughs> with a wig on. Ah! <laughs> Security, she's back. <laughs> I'll give you three points for that. Yes, well done. The first United player to realise what was going on was Gary Neville, but Power told him, I'm doing this for Eric Cantona, now shut it. Which brilliantly, <laughs> Neville obediently did. All of a sudden, I found myself in the position reserved for Andy Cole, said Rude Van Nistelrooy. <laughs> Still, it's not the first time a Man United photograph has been wrecked. This photo of Luke Chadwick was ruined when Luke Chadwick turned up. <laughs> Still, you've got to take your hat off to Carl Power. It must take some guts to line up with ten footballers who haven't got a clue who you are. Hey, Stan. <laughs> OK, Gary's team, take a look at this photo. <laughs> it's ABBA, but not as we know it, so what was that all about? Is it Aston Villa's subs bench? <laughs> I'm sure it's not the... Um, I'm, sure it's not the right. I'm sure it's not the women's doubles final at Wimbledon. <laughs> <laughs> You've got this picture on your bedroom wall, haven't you, Rory? <laughs> no, but I'm going to. <laughs> I said, though, even by my standards, that would be a challenging wank. <laughs> that would be, wouldn't it? I mean, it's Sar there's four Saracens, Saracens, Saracens players. Yeah. Can you name the players? No. Yeah. I'm naming that one Tinky Winky. <laughs> I'm naming that one Eric. Can you tell us their given names? I've just given them those names. <laughs> one of them is called Danny Grucock. Yes. But I can't remember which one it was. <laughs> I'll have to see them without their shorts on. Um, <laughs> Mark, do you recognise any of them? None at all, fortunately. OK, so you didn't get it. That was the Saracens in England Rugby Union That's Quartet, Danny Grucock, Richard Hill, Tony Diprose and David Flatman, who dressed as ABBA to promote a fundraising concert at the club by tribute band Bjorn Again. Saracens are so called because they're as fierce as real Saracens. The barbarians got their name because they're wild and fearless. And wasps are called that because it's a bit scary when they get in your car. <laughs> And at the end of that round, Gary's team have three points and David's team have six. <laughs> it's the long wish for return of our injury board now. Each team has to choose a number between one and twelve, revealing a sportsman and someone else. We want to know how that person or people wounded the sportsman. Gary's team, you have first choice of number. Number ten. Nicholas. Number 10, OK. So that is, in fact, Tiger Woods and a golf fan. Do you know Tiger Woods? I know him, yes. Oh. Tiger Woods has got more cups than Colin Montgomery's bra drawer. <laughs> Mark, I know you are top golfer, but I read an interview with you one in which you said that you love gardening and you have a huge collection of Star Trek videos. Is that correct? Uh, big fan. Yeah. And I read Wait. another interview which said you were married. So, so which one's telling the truth? <laughs> <laughs> This um, is um, a cat woman sort of person, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a tiger woman. <laughs> tiger? Tiger Woods oh, is pestered by someone dressed as a tiger. Because yeah. Razor Ruddock gets pestered by people dressed as a razor, doesn't he? <laughs> and Chopper Harris of Chelsea used to get pestered <laughs> by someone dressed as a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do you know this one, Mark? I do know, yes. Um, uh, well, he, was, was very, he was surrounded by oh, yeah. fans at some stage, uh, screaming for autographs, and he tripped over the, the, the heel or foot of one of them, and uh, uh, he hurt his leg. He, could, he couldn't move the next day. He could hardly hit a shot, and he, he very nearly didn't win the tournament by 15 shots. <laughs> <laughs> yes, correct. Three points. Well Tell done. <laughs> No, no, I was just um, wondering if anything like that happened to you, you know, having a fan. No. <laughs> it happened at this year's Pebble Beach tournament in California when he twisted his left knee signing an autograph. The fan in question was lying at his feet at the time and Tiger trod on her. As a young player, Tiger apparently fitted in trips to the local driving range with trips to the potty. Another few months and Arnold Palmer will be doing the same. <laughs> Golf is, of course, one of the few sports to have a car named after it. The Renault Dull. <laughs>
Okay, and David's team, would you like to pick a number? What should we go with, Captain? Two. Number two? Please. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, that's goalkeeper Mark Poem and heavy metal legends Iron Maiden. So how was the Derby County in Estonia goalkeeper injured by an outmoded 80s rock band? Have Derby got a keeper? <laughs> you wouldn't know, would you? May I defer for a second, Nick? Of course you may, sir. Because I wear the piece, I think we all have the wrong uh, opinion of one of our team players this evening, and I want to clear this up, because Gary Lineker, I don't know how many people here take the Observer newspaper. I suspected as much. <laughs> now, <laughs> Gary was in the Observer Sports Supplement, weren't you, the other week? A big interview, one of their top interviewees. You would think that going to Gary's house, you would have the stereotypical things you'd find there. You'd expect there'd be a CD rack full of Celine Dion and maybe the odd Barry White when he wants to get Mrs. L in the mood. <laughs> if he likes his movies, there'd be videos, there'd be Pokemon and Disney and maybe something for the kids as well, Gary. Would I be right? <laughs> Upstairs in the bedroom on his side, there may be a fine picture of himself and the cup of score from 1977. On the missus' side, a surprising number of Mal Todays and a, a picture of Mark Lawrenson to get it going. <laughs> you wouldn't expect to hear the words if you were given the guided tour, and this is my library now, would you? And yet, in this interview, it points out that he has a working knowledge of the work of Jane Austen and Virginia Woolf. Is this correct, sir? I believe this is what they said. Didn't what really. is it that attracted you to Jane Austen? Was it her seminal use of irony? the simmering tension that exists on the sexual level? Was it indeed the detailed historic analysis of the social mores of the 19th century? <laughs> or would I be right in thinking that you'd merely confused her name with that of Steve Austin, the six million dollars? <laughs> What's wrong with being a fan of Jane Austen? I, I thought Emma was probably her best because I don't think there's anything in Sense and Sensibility that wasn't already done in Pride and Prejudice. Right, aren't you? But I think what is truly amazing about Austen is that a woman of that age could be such an ironic commentator on the bourgeoisie. <laughs> so what's wrong with that? Gary, I take it all back. You're not the jugged <laughs> the Nick says you are. <laughs> Did he play in a, in a game against? Against? I'm I'm I big Maiden. West Ham fans, aren't yeah. they? For um, who? They're playing if you can tell me who he played for against Iron Maiden versus... Go on, Stan. Go on, Stan. We've told you who he plays for. Derby? No. Iron Maiden versus... <laughs> Estonia? Yes, correct. He wow. played Iron Maiden versus Estonia. <laughs> Very little Amazingly, Mark Pone was injured playing football for Estonia versus Iron Maiden. I mean, I know there are a lot of World Cup qualifying groups, but that is ridiculous. <laughs> Mind you, Northern Ireland did go down 3-0 to the Ian Gillen band. <laughs> Mark's manager at Derby, Jim Smith, is nicknamed Bald Eagle on account of his distinctive bald head, his hawkish temperament, and his ability to spot a field mouse while hovering at 5,000 feet. <laughs> Incidentally, Iron Maiden's biggest hit is the number of the beast, and if you want to know the number of the beast, Luke Chadwick, where's number 36? Bald eagles eat fish, by the way. Do Bald they? eagles don't eat field birds, they eat Yeah, fish. but they can spot them and they think, that isn't a fish, I'm not eating that. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, Gary's team have six points and David's team have nine. <laughs> Nick, may I take this moment to just point out to everyone how humble and how self-effacing you're being there. Can I just say, as a fellow supporter of the Potters, how proud I am of our brave boys. Because mm. I happened to find myself in your region at the weekend, saw the TV and I saw on the wind something called the LDV Van Cup. No, 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 no. And I couldn't no, be prouder no, for us. No, no, no. That's Port Vale, actually, yes, Jonathan. Port Vale. But I thought it was a Stoke team that won. It is. It's it's a, there's an immense rivalry between Port Vale and Stoke. Mm. So they're not the Potters? Yeah. Well, that would explain why when I was shouting my enthusiasm in the bar there, they offered to take me outside and beat me like a chipper-filled monkey. <laughs> now, now, Jonathan, if you were in Stoke, they'd offer to do that to you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Time now for our regulars to stroke a sporting superstar as we play Field the Sportsman. It's David and Jonathan first this week. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> I believe we've, uh, we've pillaged... <laughs> I believe we've pillaged Stan's little black book for this evening. And I'm looking forward to getting hold of one of the lovely ladies. <laughs> and can we have our mystery guest, please? <laughs> and... <laughs> 
90 seconds start Would now. Would you stand? I wouldn't. <laughs> Blimey. If he's Jordan, she's had her shoulders done as well. <laughs> uh, bloody hell, feel this. Come and feel this. It's like a side of hand, feel this. <laughs> Hang on. Is it Phoenix, the little animal that's won the nation's heart? <laughs> <laughs> you got? David can't count beyond I've three. I've got the weedy one here. I've got the, I've got the ones of the litter, I'm telling you. There's more of them. Yeah. There's a lot of them. There's a lot Bloody of them. hell. Yeah, is this, these look Rory's Imagine trying children. to feed this lot. <laughs> it's like a desperate Dan convention. <laughs> what is it? What's coming for the cow pie? What is it? What's Greek Spice Girls? What is it? What's going on here? Um, What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> it's Noel Edmonds. <laughs> trick to play. It's Noel Edmonds, David, and I've got the talented bit. Has <laughs> something come off in your hand again? <laughs> Saracens have it, whatever it is. The Saracens, Merlia. Come on, James. Uh, well, Richard Grucock. Hurley, Dippen, <laughs> Dick Grucock, Hill, yeah. Grucock, and Sam Smith, did you hear me? And, and, and John Brown. Brown. We'll come at least one more. Chip, Chip, yeah, David Chiplow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you that. Straight on down. That's for, considering he knows nothing about sport. I've got to say, I'm giving you that, not as an insult to them, because you should know them, four very famously England quartet from Saracens, yep. Danny Grucott, Richard Hill, Dave Flatman and Tony Diprose, but because you know nothing about sport, that was close enough for me. But I tell you what, that gingerbread one, joking aside, you probably would, wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> seriously. I'm not joking here. It's amazing what a little bit of eye makeup does. <laughs> okay, Rory and Gary, to your positions, please. Uh, uh, we did well. <laughs> okay, blindfolds on. <laughs> and can we have our Let's second see. mystery guest, please? Now. There's quite a few here. It's ah! Oh. It's Roy Keane. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. There's a bit of a baldy thing. Or he's got a helmet. What could it be? Four people. Is it uh, all the people in the world who want to play for Spurs? Maybe. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Is that you, Gary? No, it's one of these, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's how he never got booked. <laughs> <laughs> They've got something written on them. Vodafone. <laughs> Vodafone, it's a Greek team. It's, it's oh, again, it's Man Manchester United. Uh, That's it. Oh, they look alike or something. Mm. Who's that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah! Who's this? This, feel, this could be David Beckham. Uh. Is it? Let's just see. Let's just see. Is it Hang on, let's see if he's with Posh. <laughs> I suppose that bloke's on here, isn't he? Carl Power. Yeah, I want you to name which one is Carl Power, though, to win oh, it. Oh. Oh, hang on. It's not this one. This must be... Is this Fergie? Oh, hang on. Let's... He's got his watch on. <laughs> let's see, because uh, Carl Power's supposed to be a... Um, a How long's left? A Cantona, Oh, only a few seconds. C yeah, but it's Man United. We get an extra three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Cortez. Hey? Cortez. Yeah, I think yeah. this one... I think yeah. this one is Carl Power. It's the correct Power. answer. Well done. <laughs> Yeah, it is a little bit spooky. Bit spooky. And so at the end of that round, Gary's team have nine points and David's team have twelve. Mm -hmm. Proceedings with the name game. The leaders goes first, which is David's team. Yes, Pass those along to Jonathan, please. Stan, that'd be very kind of you. Marvellous. And you have 90 seconds, as many names as you can. Starting now. Uh, if you go down to the today, you're in for a big surprise. surprise. Tiger Woods. Well done. 
OK, uh, this bloke, uh, first name, first bit, when you laugh and you go, uh, yeah, second name, there's a game called Something City where you populate the virtual reality with tiny little figures <laughs> that you can move around at the click of a mouse. Sim. Yeah, that's it. So first name, Hassim. Hassim. Second Ruckman. name, Ruckman. well done, sir. All right, this one is a big bloke who spends a lot of time lying down these days. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. This is a trickier one. He's in the <laughs> British Lions. He's the oh, captain. Martin. Johnson. There, yeah, well done. All right. This one. Now, the second name. <laughs> People have often accused me of being like this due to my extravagant dress sense. In Spain, if you were in Spain and you wanted a cerveza or a beer, be you would ask for a San Miguel. Miguel. Okay, and the second name is a bit lardy No, he's a bit of a... At school, if you wanted to get a cigarette off someone, you were buying, you'd go, can I... a fag? Well, you wouldn't know, <laughs> would you? You wouldn't know, yeah. You'd just ask your butler, wouldn't you? A, a fag is a very different thing. At your school, school you'd be... <laughs> <laughs> well, that would make it all the more appropriate then. He's a, he's a footballer from Chile. Ponce. Ponce, that's it. Ponce. All right, Ponce. this one, Ponce. second name, Ponce. Harry Enfield. Ah, oh, man, we were putting there. Very good. We were getting there. Very good. I was going to say so. Okay, Mark. Nine will do it for you. Time starts now. Um, Manchester United midfielder, prawn sandwiches, thug. Roy King. Yeah. Um, <laughs> your favourite golfer? Nick Faldo. Correct. <laughs> uh, Ex-England England batsman from South Africa. He'd be slaughtered or incinerated now if he was hanging out. <laughs> Very good. Uh, he was on earlier. He, he um, cultivated a willy. Cultivated a <laughs> willy. <laughs> Rugby player, Saracens. Yes. Grucock. Oh, Grucock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Danny. Danny. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, Glenn, the manager hey. of... Um, Hoddle. 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 Yeah. Um, Chris used to sing a song with him. Hoddle. You're talking a load of... Twaddle. Twaddle, yeah. <laughs> First name the same as, um, as, 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 um, somebody else with this name. I can't <laughs> think of anybody. Twaddle. Kevin, that'll do. Kevin, um, this is a golfer. Uh, they come out of oysters, they're valuable, they're white and shiny. Oh. And something you've never committed, Gary. A sin. <laughs> <laughs> he's not senior. He's, he's not senior, he's... Junior. It's, this happened a long time ago. A long time I'm... A long, long time I'm... Uh, uh. Wake me up before you go. go. Thank you. <laughs> American, a Native American golfer, friend of Tiger Woods, I believe. Um, he's got a funny name. Nota uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, he's not. He's not the first. Third. He's not the third. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is his first name is a short, short muff puncher. <laughs> oh good. <laughs> oh, good. You've done very well. You've moved on to 16, but this week's winners with 17 are Davis Team. Oh, wow. So our thanks to David, Jonathan, and Stan, Gary, Rory, and Mark. We're all off to Toronto to see Lennox Lewis's homecoming. My name's Nick Hancock. <laughs> they think it's all over. It is now. Later this night, UKG2 The Musical is here and there at home. Hancock's back with Ozzy and Boy George, Paul Merton entertains John Peel, and the Silver Fox Parky lets Robbie entertain him. Next this morning, though, two pints of lager and a pack of crisps, please. <laughs>